So, we have seen till now that if you have a global continuous symmetry, then it leads to conserved currents okay. and you can uh, write down a conserved charge, uh, conserved, uh, conserved charge from this current okay. and d q over d t is 0 for that conserved charge. Can okay. you form the conserved charge from j 0. Okay. And we have also seen, so that is that these conserve, conserved charges are the generators of symmetry transformation. So, what it precisely means is the following. So, if you have a symmetry transformation which is this, <coughs> so epsilon is a small parameter and this is uh, the transformation of the field. Then if you take the commutator of the conserved charge q with the field, then it gives you apart from a factor of minus i this piece the psi of a. Okay. We also learn how to go from a field configuration at t naught x naught to a field configuration phi of t of x using the conserved charges which for the case of translations are uh, the, the momenta or the momentum operator. So, it is as you recall it is this. That is the dot product here. Okay, and we have seen several conserved charges till now. So, we have seen Hamiltonian momentum which together form P mu. Okay. We have seen angular momentum J mu nu. This corresponds to rotations and boost, these are from translations. Okay, and if you have some internal symmetries then you have corresponding uh, charges for them. Okay. So, this comes from internal symmetries. Okay. So, I will give you one uh, very simple exercise. It is not difficult at all. So, you can take the action of <coughs> complex scalar field. So, you take d 4 x del mu phi i del mu phi i. So, you have the fields phi r are complex, there is a summation over i. Okay. So, here by phi i phi i, I mean phi i phi i the summation runs from 1 to n. So, there are total n number of fields uh, and I should write this okay. n phi i's and n phi i stars and then you have minus m square phi i star phi i and some potential term which is also function of this. Okay. So, as you know this is invariant under uh, un and it has a sun subgroup. So, if you look at infinitesimal transformations of this form, where phi i tilde x is delta i j plus i times epsilon k t k i j and you have k summation over all the k's and you have plus order epsilon square terms. So, these ones you can ignore let us keep only order epsilon terms and then phi j of x. 
Okay. So, T k's are the generators of your S u n. So, all we are saying is that the phi i tilde is same as phi i if you are looking at the order 0 term. So, you have phi, phi i here and then order epsilon term okay, is proportional to this. So, these are the generators of S u n. Okay. Now, uh, just to remind you that the generators satisfy the following algebra. So, if you take two generators T k and T l and the competition relation is okay, and the generators are Hermitian and these are real numbers. Okay, the f's are these uh, structure constants are real numbers. Okay. So, this is what you will need to use okay, and um, show that if you construct a conserved charge q k. So, if you take epsilon k. So, right now there is a summation, but let us say uh, you take one of the epsilons to be non-zero and all others epsilons to be zero and find out the charge corresponding to uh, that symmetry transformation. Okay. Then you will get some charge and I am saying let us call that epsilon to be epsilon k. So, the corresponding charge I am writing as q k okay, for that symmetry transformation. Similarly, do it for take some other uh, epsilon to be non-zero and all others to be 0 and similarly find the conserved charge q l and find out the commutator okay. and show that this commutation relation gives you the following. Okay. So, what you see is that the charges here they satisfy the same algebra as uh, the, these, um, generator, um, these generators of S u n. So, if you look at the generators of S u n, they satisfy this algebra. Okay? And if you calculate in this field theory the conserved charges, okay, then the conserved charges corresponding to these uh, S, uh, internal symmetry, you will find it obeys exactly the same competition relations and the algebra is same. Okay? So, this is a simple exercise that you can do. Uh, it is fairly straightforward. And uh, one thing which you would need to use is the following. So, you will have uh, when you are doing this, you will need to use commutators like this. Okay. So, if you have these four, then you can use the following relation. Okay, that is one thing you would require and you will proceed by first constructing j mu and then looking at d cube x j 0 okay. and also you will need um, to use that this is, these are real numbers and that these are Hermitian. Okay, with that you will be able to show this and this is a nice interesting result right? that, the, that the charges the q satisfy the same algebra as the generators of the group. Okay, so, please do that exercise. Another exercise which also would not be difficult is that show that if you take the generators of translation that is the momentum and take the internal uh, the, the charge corresponding to internal symmetry transformation the q k they commute. Similarly, if you take j mu nu angular momentum and take a uh, charge q k which corresponds to internal symmetry again they commute and anyway we have seen that two charges corresponding to internal symmetry do not necessarily commute. Okay. So, this 
So this is something you should sh show and just to remind you what j menu is, j menu is d cube x m 0 mu mu. Okay. This is what we had um, seen earlier. Okay, so this is, uh, these are some exercises that you have to do. Okay, now we want to uh, further explore the consequences of symmetry in a theory. Okay. So, we have once you have done these exercises and you also use this one that the momentum operator uh, p mu and p nu they commute. So, together with this we see the following that the p's commute among themselves, the p's commute with q okay, and the q's commute with j mu, but q's do not commute among themselves. Okay. So, if you take um, a subset, see not all q's commute, but some of the q's may commute. So, if you take a subset of q's, sub subset of whatever number of q's you have in your uh, in your theory corresponding to that symmetry, okay. Let us say a subset which is uh, a subset of this commutes among themselves. Okay. Now, if they commute, if, if a subset of this commutes among themselves, let us call them uh, di first. So, di are the generators of symmetry transformation which are commuting. So, we can diagonalize them simultaneously. So, let us say they are h of them. Okay. Now, these, these di is together with the p mu's, we can diagonalize them together. Okay. So, if we can simultaneously diagonalize them, then you see that the states in your theory, the quantum states that you have in your theory, uh, you will be able to find a basis in which the states are labeled by the eigenvalues of p mu and the eigenvalues of d i's. Okay. So, we can find states or eigenstates which or simultaneous simultaneous eigenstates of um, simultaneous eigenstates of p and q not q as the set the subset of q's which uh, we can diagonalize okay i think i should mention one more thing which is uh, which is important yeah so i, I forgot to write but if you um, look at the commutation relation of j mu with p mu you will not get zero Okay, because p mu is a vector, so it will transform like a vector. So, uh, maybe you should work out uh, as an exercise. So, find out the commutation relation for this okay, and you will see this is not 0. Okay, and it is just because this is a vector, so it has to transform like a vector. Okay. So, because of this, um, you can use only the p's and the q's to uh, uh, label the states because these are the only operators that you will be able to simultaneously diagonalize. Okay. So, simultaneous eigenstates here. Okay. So, how will we label the states? We will label the states like this. So, small p mu is the eigenvalue of this operator p and d1, d2 these are the eigenvalues of the operators capital Di. Okay? And remember capital Di are just the charges, some of the charges 
corresponding to this internal symmetry. Okay. So, if you take a p mu and act on this, you get p mu and the same state back. And if you take um, q and act on this state, not q, let us call it d i, you will get d i p mu. Okay. So, you see that um, now you, you the states in your theory are not just labeled by uh, the momenta they carry, but also they may carry other charges okay, which are these d 1, d 2 and d h up to d h. So, uh, you may have states which have charges in them and in addition to the momentum. So, you can do another exercise which will uh, help appreciate this point further. So, if you take the theory of um, complex scalar field okay, with only u 1 symmetry. Okay, so, there is no for the label i, it is only phi and phi star, only two fields here. You okay, can look at this. Okay, look at this theory. And this has a u 1 symmetry. Okay. Now, with this uh, symmetry, you will be able to construct the conserved charge. I am sure I gave this earlier as an exercise, but again you can do if you have not. So, you get the conserved charge. Now, we can find states in this theory, which will be simultaneous eigenstates of the momentum operator p mu okay, and this conserved charge q. Okay. So, let us say the um, states, let us write the states with the following label. So, if I take p mu and act on this eigenstate, okay, it gives me p mu, small p mu, um, okay. and when I act with the charge operator q, this eigenstate gives me E times p mu e. So, e is the eigenvalue that uh, you have for this charge. Okay. So, when this operator acts, you get an eigenvalue e. So, e is the charge you have for this state. Okay. And now, you see that you can have states in the theory which will carry momentum and some charge. And here it was u 1. So, you had one charge, but if you have um, a more general symmetry, S u n, you will have more than one charges that will label the states in your theory. Okay, um, now, let us derive further consequences of symmetry. So, as I argued some time back that the objects of interest in a quantum field theory are this. Okay, because all the things that you can construct, you can construct out of uh, the field operators and the and their derivatives. So, this is what you uh, need to uh, calculate in the quantum field theory. Okay. Also, you will have, if you have um, written down a theory which is invariant under space time translations, you will have p mu. If there is some internal symmetry, you will have a set of charges q a. Okay, let us for the moment just write 1, because whatever I say will apply for more than 1 also. Okay. And then you will have a ground state in your theory. Okay. And you build out, build everything else out of these kind of objects. Okay, and we can use this to analyze uh, some of the properties of these states, which are due to symmetry. 
Okay. So now I'll assume that the ground state in the theory okay, has zero energy and momentum. So it, it's annihilated. So the eigenvalues are zero. So P mu annihilate the vacuum. Okay. I also assume that the ground state has no charge. Okay. So Q when it acts on this, it has an eigenvalue 0, so it also annihilates the vacuum. Okay, so they are, uh, the ground state has no charge. And if it does, if this is not true, then your uh, theory has broken symmetry, spontaneously broken symmetry. Okay. It means that you have uh, other ground states also with uh, momentum 0 and energy 0, but they, uh, but when you do a symmetry tran internal symmetry transfer on transformation on that ground state, it takes you from one ground state to another ground state. Okay. So, we will not deal with those in this course and the theories which we are going to deal with are the ones which satisfy these conditions. Okay. Fine. Um, now, with these assumptions, we can obtain relations between uh, certain correlation functions. So, you would naively expect this and it, it's going to turn out to be true that if you take the following, if you take uh, a correlation function or this uh, matrix element in the vacuum state of phi tilde x1. So, phi is the field and this is the transform field under whatever symmetry you are looking at. Okay. Phi tilde x2, phi tilde xn. Okay. And since we are saying that the ground state does not transform under the symmetry transformation, this statement. Okay. And these are the transform fields, but my action remains unchanged under uh, phi going to phi tilde, meaning theory remains unchanged you would expect that the correlation functions also remain unchanged. Right, so that is the expectation we will have based on physical grounds and let us see whether whatever we have learned so far does give that result. Okay, so let us um, start. So, let us start from the left hand side. And this one I will write as 0 uh, vacuum phi of x1 plus epsilon psi x1. So, that is what phi tilde of x1 is. Similarly, for phi tilde x2 and phi tilde xn. Okay. Now, this object, if you look at order epsilon to the 0 terms, it is simply this. X n. Then, if you collect all the order epsilon terms, you get the following. So, you take phi x 1 from, uh, sorry, epsilon psi x 1 from here phi x 2 from here, phi x 3 from here and so forth, phi x n from here. So, you get one order epsilon term which will be psi x 1, phi x 2, phi x n okay. plus now you take epsilon uh, psi terms from the second term, from the second factor and you will get from the first one phi x 1 you should take, here you should take psi x 2, then you have phi x 3, phi x n. Okay. And then similarly you continue and you get phi x n minus 1 psi x n. Okay. And plus other order epsilon square terms. 
So you see that um, these terms have uh, in, e in each such term you have one factor of psi and all the remainings are phi. Okay? So that is the object that we get. Now I will use a uh, following result that if I take uh, the generator Q, okay, remember all the phi's, uh, q's, all these are operators right now, we are doing in, working in quantum theory. Okay? So the Q is an operator and if you look at this commutation relation, okay, it is trying to do something, let us not do that. So phi x1, phi x n, Okay, this is an ordinary, uh, I mean, this is just a commutator and you can see that it gives you the following. So, first is you take a commutator with phi x1 and other fields are sitting outside. Then you have another term which is phi x1 and then you have q commutator with x phi x2 and other fields are sitting here. other terms and you have phi x1, phi x n minus 1 and you have q phi x n this competitor. Okay, so this is something you can uh, verify. Now let us sandwich this on both sides by vacuum. So I will apply a vacuum here and vacuum there. Okay? So when I do that, so sandwich with this and this okay and use the following use the fact that our vacuum is annihilated by the um, by the conserved charge so this is zero and our conserved charge we assume to be hermitian so that q dagger is q which also implies that if you are working on the bra vector you get this to be 0. Okay? So now uh, let us see what we get. So when I apply on both sides of the vacuum and I write this as q times this entire product minus this entire product times q. So you will have q times all these operators. Let me write phi 1 phi 2 phi n. Okay, instead of spending time in writing the arguments I will just write phi, phi 1 to phi n. So, you will get one term this okay, and another term will be this one. Okay. And because our vacuum is annihilated by the charges, both the terms vanish. Okay. So, when I sandwich this entire equation with the vacuum on both sides, the left hand side will give me 0. Okay. Let us see what we get for the right hand side. So, we have a 0 and um, okay, and here you will have 0, but q with phi is the generator uh, of the symmetry and as I wrote earlier, let us see, where, where was it, yeah, this one. So apart from a factor of minus i, what you get is psi, okay. So q phi is psi and because I have a 0 on the left, I will not worry about the factor of i that you can uh, remove. So, I get psi of x1, the operator psi of x1 times phi x2, so and so forth. Okay. Plus phi of x1, so this term here, then this one gives you psi x2, then you have phi x3, phi xn, and similarly other terms. Okay? So, at your, your, you will have one psi here, next time a psi here, next time a psi here and so forth. Okay? And um, yeah, this is fine. Now, let us go back here. So, you see 
this piece, this order epsilon term is exactly what we have written down on the next slide. Okay. So, if the psi is switching places, so psi is here and next time it is here and uh, last time it is here. So, this piece, this entire order epsilon term is we can, um, so let me see how I can write that. Okay, there is no need to write, I will just declare that it is 0. See the order epsilon term, uh, the coefficient of epsilon is this, this piece. Let me show you again this piece in the round brackets. So, that is 0, that is what we have shown, which means that under the uh, transformation, this, this object okay, is the same as uh, this object which is constructed out of untransformed fields and the order epsilon term vanishes and the changes appear at order epsilon square. Okay, so, that is what we have shown. So, what we have shown is this 0 a vacuum phi tilde x 1 <coughs> phi tilde x n this is the same as phi tilde x 1 phi tilde x 2 phi tilde x n and the changes are of order epsilon square. Okay. <clears throat> so, this is good if you are looking at infinitesimal transformations, it is not changing to order epsilon okay. and that is consistent with, with what uh, expectation we had on physical grounds. But how about finite transformations? Finite transformations is easy to build because you can construct any finite transformation in n steps okay, and you can uh, take those n steps to be very small and in the limit you take n to be large, your steps become infinitesimal. Okay. So, we can build in finite steps. So, let us say we have total capital N steps. Okay. So, the entire thing I divided in steps. So, that each step is of order epsilon and when I multiply order ep uh, epsilon with k, I get order 1. So, this is finite. Okay. So, you have one finite step which is built out of k uh, n steps where each step is of order epsilon okay. which implies that your epsilon is order 1 over n. Okay. So, the difference between this correlator and this with without uh, transform fields, this is order epsilon square. Okay. So, when you do successive transformations to build up a finite transformation at each step, you make uh, the, the difference that you have between this and that is of order epsilon square. Okay. So, when you have done total n number of steps, the difference between this and this will be at most n times order epsilon square. Okay, right? So, after n successive transformations, the difference between this with transform fields. Okay, I am suppressing the, okay, let me write it. This is small n, okay, and, and this oops, the difference between these two will be of order epsilon uh, of will be of order epsilon square times n okay because each time you uh, the difference is order epsilon square and you are taking n steps so they add up and give you n times epsilon square okay but then you realize that epsilon times n is of order 1 okay which means if you look at n epsilon square this is n times epsilon is 1 over n so 1 over n square 
and as you take n going to infinity this goes to 0 okay so you see that the the difference between this and this vanishes when you are taking um, n to be very large so when you build up the finite transformations those differences just disappear okay and you get the exact result this okay and um, make sure that you also um, have an um, you know, intuition why this should happen. So imagine your field theory you have some field configuration okay and then you are doing a um, transformation on that field so you have a new field con you have uh, this transform field configurations okay, ground state is still the same and when you construct that that quantity okay that should turn out to be this because your action doesn't change okay and now we have an explicit proof of that also okay so we have um, uh, talked quite a lot about symmetries and their consequences okay and mostly i have talked about um, uh, continuous symmetries okay and similarly um, the the discrete symmetries will have similar consequences of course there will be no conserved charges but relations of this form will also be true there okay okay so we'll stop our discussion on symmetries here and we'll continue further uh, the lectures in the next video